one step ahead of the algorithm, one missed upload, and it's no joke. I was going to continue that little bit there, but honestly, it's, it's kind of hard coming up with uh, rhymes and stuff on the fly. So you know what? We're just going to cut it there. That's fine. <laughs> it's a really catchy song, though, and it happens to be in this great movie. Hello, welcome back to another installment of Home Media Reviews. Hopefully you're seeing this because the YouTube algorithm has been screwing me these last couple of weeks. Or I don't know, maybe you guys aren't interested in this stuff. I don't know. My, my view count has been relatively low on these videos these last couple of weeks, so I'm wondering if YouTube has put me in jail for something. I don't know. I don't remember saying anything remotely controversial on this website. I don't know, they could be looking at my Twitter where I could tweet out that I don't like pancakes and the Thomas fandom would be screaming at me for being racist towards waffles because that's how petty they, most of them are. So, here we are. We're talking about Aladdin this week. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into the history section of Aladdin. So Aladdin hit theaters on November 11th, 1992, and I want to preface this here. This is Disney's Aladdin. Not a lot of those other rip-off movies that try to be this movie, because this was really successful when it first came out, primarily because of Robin Williams as the genie. Or a lot of other companies in general tried to rip this movie off with lower budget animated movies. I know of that because when I did my research for this on blu-ray.com there were so many rip-off Aladdin DVDs that popped up when I was doing my research. I was like dang this is a really like is Aladdin in the public domain? I think the character might be. I don't know about this movie though. I mean obviously this movie is not in public domain but I think the character might be because there are so many Aladdin movies out there. And if I'm going by their box art, they all look awful. <laughs> I did not see this movie in theaters. I was not born when it came out. My parents had just married, actually, in 1992. So I was not even a glimmer in their eye at this point. Would have been cool to see it in theaters, though. I don't know if it was ever re-released. -re it was planned to get an IMAX re-release, -re I think in like 2003 or so. But that was canceled, unfortunately. I wouldn't have been old enough to appreciate it though so i'm kind of happy that i wasn't dragged to theaters to see this when i was a kid it then hit vhs on september 29th 1993 not a year after it came out but pretty close about nine ten months after which is relatively quick well not by our standards nowadays we get stuff on streaming services 45 days after they hit theaters now and then on physical media the typical time frame is about two to three months but Back then, it took a long time for movies to hit theaters. Back then, it took movies a long time to hit physical media. If you remember in our Star Wars original trilogy home media review from way back in season one, I talked about how Star Wars didn't hit VHS until five years after it hit theaters. It hit theaters in 77. It didn't hit VHS until 1982. So Aladdin coming out nine, ten months after it hit theaters, that's actually not terrible. This VHS is super common. I found a lot of them on eBay while I was doing my research for this. A lot of people bought it. It sold like 10 million copies, I think, in the first week it was put out on the market, which is crazy that a VHS sold that much. But that means the secondary market is flooded with them, so they're worth virtually nothing. Here's a format we don't get to talk about much on home media reviews. That would be the Laserdisc format. This got a widescreen Laserdisc special edition on September 14th, 1994. For those of you that don't know what a Laserdisc is, it's basically a VHS, but on a giant LP-sized disc that looks like a DVD. But again, it's, it's the size of an old vinyl LP. This was like the 4K Blu-ray of the 90s. It had the highest video quality the highest audio quality that you could possibly get. It was an analog format. It wasn't digital like our Blu-rays nowadays are, like a Blu-ray is now, but it was the highest quality that, that you could get back in the 90s. A lot of film buffs had Laserdisc collections. I never saw any in my childhood. Laserdisc was dead by the time I was a kid. Uh, I had VHS tapes and DVDs primarily. 
Speaking of that, a full decade later, on October 5th, 2004, we got a VHS reprint of Aladdin, as well as its first DVD release. Now, this is the one I had as a kid. This was a two-disc release. That second disc was packed with bonus content. This was a really cool release back in 2004. The VHS that came out in 2004 is not as common as the one from 93. I guess people skipped it because they probably already owned it and they wanted the new format. I wish I still had that DVD. I don't know. I might still have it. I don't know where it is, though. I wish I could find it because that... That bonus content, that'd be pretty cool to have on my media server, but I don't know where it is. There was also a collector set, which came out on DVD. I don't know what the hell is in this thing. Uh, Blu-ray.com just gave me a picture, and it doesn't look as cool as the standard poster art on both DVD and the v v VHS. So, I don't know what this is about. 11 years after that, on October 13th, 2015, Aladdin hit Blu-ray for the first time in the United States. I say that because it had already been on Blu-ray in certain European markets. Some people actually imported it from the UK and such because they already had it and Blu-rays are region free. Like with any modern r r release of a movie, we have a lot of exclusives to talk about. We have a Target exclusive with a 32-page storybook. Interesting. I'm getting Deadpool 2 vibes off of that. And Best Buy comes back in with another steelbook, but it's not what you think. It's not a steelbook. It's a lenticular slipcover. Part of me wonders if there was a steelbook planned for this, but it got canceled for some reason. And this lenticular slipcover was given to Best Buy just as an exclusive, because this feels like a Walmart thing. I would like to know the full story behind that. September 10th, 2019 is a very important day for Aladdin fans, <laughs> it is a very important day because Aladdin hit 4K Blu-ray for the very first time. This was part of the signature collection because Disney keeps rebranding their collections over and over again so you'll just keep buying their movies. Well, they did before they launched their streaming service and now they don't want you to own anything. There was also a Blu-ray reprint that came out on September 10th, 2019, to go with your 4K. This was a Blu-ray slash DVD combo pack. They both feature the same poster art. I think it looks great. We return to normal now. Best Buy had an exclusive steelbook. Not a stupid lenticular slipcover, but this steelbook, man, this is not better than that artwork on the standard 4K slip. That, this just looks bland. This tells me nothing about what this movie is. It has about. It's just Aladdin and Jasmine on a magic carpet, and there's a lamp on the sand. It just, I didn't like this artwork at all. And then Target comes back with another exclusive with a filmmaker gallery book. This artwork's pretty good too, but I kind of like the standard one just a little bit more. The Target one's definitely more creative. Later on, on October 8th, 2019, we got a standard DVD only reprint. Now, this axed the second disc with all the bonus content. This is just bare bones. It's just a DVD and it has matching poster art to the Blu-ray and the 4K. On March 2nd, 2021, we got a Blu-ray 2-pack. You could get the animated version of Aladdin and the live action version of Aladdin. Yikes. <laughs> I haven't seen the live action remake. I've heard it's one of the best live action remakes of a Disney movie. I don't personally care for them that much. So I don't know how much stock saying that, oh, this is the best remake of a better animated movie. I don't know how, I don't know how to judge that. I own it because I got it on clearance at Target, but will I ever watch it? Who knows? But if you want both the original and the remake in one little package, here you go. But if you want it on just DVD, you'd have to wait till May 11th of 2021 to get just a standard DVD two-pack of the animated version and the live-action version of Aladdin. And that wraps up your history section on Aladdin. A lot of different r r releases spanning a lot of formats. Let's go ahead and move right along to the close-up section.
Alrighty everyone, here's your close-up look at Aladdin. We only have the standard 4K Ultra HD copy to look at here, so let's jump into it. 4K up there at the top, 4K plus Blu-ray plus digital code in a gold bar. You have this beautiful artwork here. I love this poster. It's got all your main characters on it. Genie, Aladdin, Jasmine, Jaffa, and Iago, as well as the Agrabah Palace back there, and the lamp, and also the magic carpet. The only thing that's missing is Abu. I don't know where he is on this poster, but it's an absolutely beautiful poster. I absolutely adore it. First time on 4K Ultra HD. Four times sharper than HD. Brackets. Movie only. <laughs> Includes a alternate ending, cast recording sessions, and more. And then a little blurb about movies anywhere. The Signature Collection. This is the collection this movie is a part of. It's another marketing scheme Disney puts on to try to sell you new copies of, of, of your movies. And we also have the stupid Ultimate Collector's Edition down there at the bottom. It's not Ultimate. It's not a collector's thing. It's just the standard 4K. Um, it clogs up the poster, but I think the poster still looks great. Even with all that junk on it. Ultra HD Blu-ray. Aladdin. Genie giving us a great big smile. The back features a blurb about movies anywhere. Blurb about the movie. Arabian mer mer merchant that starts off the, the movie who is just genie in d disguise. I know that's a fan theory. I don't know if it's actually been confirmed or not, but I think it's him. There's our uh, barcode peeking out through. And there's a boo. He's on the back. And then next to that we have Jafar. Iago in the Cave of Wonders, Blu-ray with your bonus features down there at the bottom, 4K on the side of that. You've got instructions for how to play it because apparently we're 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 still too stupid to realize how to play a 4K disc. Legalese and stuff down there at the bottom, and confirmation that the iTunes version requires an iTunes uh, account, just in case you didn't know that. Take off our slip cover, which is a really nice slip cover. It's embossed. So it feels really nice when you touch it. Same artwork uh, underneath. Same spine. Same back. Your Blu-ray is pretty standard. It's just colored blue with the film's logo. Your 4K disc isn't that much better. It's just the genie with the Arabian sunset behind him and 4K printed on the side there. These disc artworks, not the greatest. So that wraps up your close-up. Let's move right along to the menu tour. Alrighty, everyone. Here we are for a menu tour of Aladdin. Starting off with our standard Blu-ray here. We have our basic Blu-ray menu. It looks pretty good. It's in HD. You got clips from the movie playing in the background with your options down here on the bottom. We have play, bonus features, scene selection, and setup. Let's take a look at our bonus content here. We have Aladdin on Aladdin. Let's not be too hasty. The voices of Aladdin. Alternate endings, classic bonus preview, the genie outtakes, Aladdin creating Broadway magic, genie 101, Ron and John, you ain't never had a friend like me, song selection and audio commentaries, and the little info box down there on the back end. I want to take a look at this classic bonus preview. Okay, so I axed most of that footage for copyright, but the trailer is about all of the bonus content that was on that classic DVD set from 2004, the Platinum version of Aladdin, and then also from the 2015 Blu-ray release of Aladdin, but it's not on the disc. You can access that bonus content when you redeem your digital copy. So I guess you can access it through Movies Anywhere or Voodoo or anywhere like that. That's dumb. <laughs> I hate that. Why didn't you put it on the disc? You have ample space to do it. This movie's not very big. It's barely 90 minutes, and a Blu-ray can hold 50 gigs, so I don't know why you couldn't just put all that on the Blu-ray. Or give us a second disc. It costs you, what, 25 cents to print a Blu-ray? Come on, guys. That's, that's stupid. Scene selection. Uh, we have a little bar over here telling us where we are in the movie, and each of our scenes have a number and a title. That's fun. So we have 24 scenes, 25 if you count the end credits. And for setup, languages, we have a 7.1 master audio mix, a 2.0 descriptive audio mix, 
French 5.1 and Spanish 5.1 mix respectively. And your subtitles include English, French, and Spanish. And now folks, here we are for our 4K menu tour. Our little bar down here at the bottom with our options has been shrunk and our visuals are now in 4K. I can't tell a difference. Can you? <laughs> That's the problem with animated movies on 4K. It's hard to make them worth it, honestly. Because like 1080p already looks great for an animated feature, unless you're talking about something like the Charlie Brown Christmas where I can see the little bits of animation and where the, the lines move in 4K. I don't really see a need to own animated movies on this new format. That's a discussion for another day. We have play, scene selection, and settings. Scene selection, same scenes as on the standard Blu-ray. Let me just fact check that real quick. Pretty sure they're all the same title as well. Yep, same number of scenes as on the Blu-ray. Settings, that's where things get different. Languages, we have a Dolby Atmos mix, English 2.0 mix, French 5.1, Spanish 5.1, and then uh, Chinese or Japanese 7.1 mix. For subtitles, we have English, French, Spanish, and then Chinese or Japanese again. And then for disc languages, we have English, French, Spanish, and Chinese or Japanese. And again, Disney, no bonus content on the 4K, not even a commentary. There are commentaries, they were on the Blu-ray, they had their own separate menu, why aren't they on the 4K? I will complain about this until Disney fixes it or the day that I die. That, folks, wraps up your menu tour. Let's head on back and answer the five main questions, as always. All right, so we're back from the close-up. Now it's time to answer the five main questions, as always. Number one, where can you pick this product up? I seem to remember seeing some Blu-ray copies on like a Walmart or a Target shelf a few months ago. I don't know if that was just mine, like they had back stock and they were putting it on the shelves, but I don't know, maybe you could find it at a big box retail store. Your best bet though is going online, especially for that 4K. Number two, is this product still being printed nowadays? As much as I want to say yes, since the most recent reprint was in 2021, May of 2021 no less, we're in May of 2022 now, I can't say yes to this. I'm sorry. It's too far. Number three, should you pick this product up? Boy, I had so much fun watching Aladdin. Again, this movie is like just comedic fun, but but it has a great story to it as well. We follow the main character, Aladdin, voiced by Scott Wanger. I think is how you pronounce his last name. He's a street rat riff raff. I don't buy that who has to steal food he lives with his monkey friend abu who's very cute they get caught up in this whole conspiracy with the king's grand vizier known as jafar who's our villain of the movie who's voiced by jonathan freeman he's trying to take over the kingdom well he's actually a sultan because this takes place in arabia so Blah, 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 blah. Aladdin finds a lamp. He meets Genie, voiced by Robin Williams. He has to seduce the princess Jasmine, voiced by Linda Larkin. Honestly, everyone's seen Aladdin. Everyone knows what happens. But boy, oh boy, is it a damn fun time. I love Scott Weinger as Aladdin. He's the perfect mix of innocent kid, but also really savvy street rat. He knows how to steal stuff and get away w w w with it. He reminded me a lot of Han Solo from Star Wars. He's the bad boy with a heart of gold. He'll steal from you, but if he sees somebody else who's poor and can't steal for themselves, he'll happily give up his half of bread for them. And then Abu will follow shortly later on with his half, but he'll still have taken a bite out of it. Because <laughs> Abu's just a bit more selfish than he is. Linda Larkin as Princess Jasmine is really great, too. I gotta tell you, y'all, when I saw this movie as a kid, I didn't really like girls that much. You know, I was very young. I thought girls were icky. They had cooties. Princess Jasmine kind of turned me around on that. <laughs> Every child has their animated crush. Don't act like you're so high and mighty like you didn't have one. Like, come on. Her design is very flattering, and her voice is stupendous. She's a great character too. I really like how how very modern she is. Her character is more of just, hey, stop trying to decide my life for me because back then that's what happened. 
I don't know. I just really like her message and how she was able to stand up for her own life and make her own choices. I feel that, that that's a really strong role model for uh, younger girls of nowadays. And I love how natural her r relationship with Aladdin feels. Even though Aladdin lies to her about being a prince, and it's obviously tearing him up inside for having to do it to even get her to talk to him, she still loves him at the very end, and they choose to get married. I like their love story. It's, it's very fast-paced, but it works. This movie has a very fast pace to it. It's only like an hour and 20 minutes or so, and that's without credits, so it has to get you from point A to point B in a very quick manner, but it's very efficient. Using songs as a way to keep the plot going forward and keeping you engaged in the overall story. Oh, here's a song because it's a musical. We have to put in a song at this point to qualify as a musical. No, the songs all felt natural. Aladdin song tells you about his character. Genie song tells you about his character. A Whole New World, which is probably the best song the best movie, although I'm more partial to the Genie song because it's hilarious because of Robin Williams. That one is to set up Princess Jasmine and Aladdin's love story going forward on the magic carpet. Each song serves a purpose. I keep talking about him. Let's talk about Robin Williams. He's fantastic as Genie. I absolutely love all of his ad libs and how they actually put them into the movie. Who would have thought that you would have had a Jack Nicholson impression that was actually animated and left in a kid's movie. That's insane to me. All right, Sparky, here's the deal. And they, and they make him look like Jack Nicholson. That's crazy. I loved that. And of course, his song is absolutely stupendous. It gets stuck in your head. You ain't never had a friend, never had a friend, never had a friend like me. Woo! 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. Jafar, Jafar, he's our man. If he can do it, great! Everyone says Robin Williams is the standout performance of the last movie, and I tend to agree. I think he's a fantastic, but boy, did I love Jonathan Freeman as Jafar. This guy has the most slimy voice that you've ever heard in your life, but it's Oddly charming. I'm so sorry, princess. The boy's sentence has already been carried out. No, genie. I have decided to make my final wish. Excellent work, Iago. Ah! Ah, well, go on! No, no. No, no, uh, really. Oh, on a scale of one to ten, you, sir, are an eleven. Oh, Jafar, I'm embarrassed, I'm blushing, really! That's another great vocal performance here, Gilbert Gottfried as Iago. I'm so sad he died this year, that's that's horrible. I would have loved to have heard his Iago voice one last time. My favorite Iago joke is a very, it's a very simple one. It's after Jafar gets found out that he's been hypnotizing the Sultan, and he's laughing hysterically because he finds out Aladdin has the lamp. So <laughs> Iago's like, Ah oh boy, ah oh boy, he's cracked, he's got nuts. Jafar, Jafar, get a grip! And Jafar grabs his throat. <laughs> Good grip. I laughed at that for a solid five minutes. I don't know why that's my favorite Iago joke. He's got great lines throughout it. And did I shove crackers down his throat? Ha! Make way for the world's most powerful sorcerer! Jaffa! Honestly, there's not one bad vocal performance throughout this entire cast. Even the magic carpet has, like, a voice to him. He never speaks, but you know exactly what that piece of felt is thinking. <laughs> it's hilarious. Abu also never speaks either. I mean, he may have a few words here or there, but he's a great character. All the characters here are great, and all their vocal performances are amazing. I love the, the last movie's story and how it sets up at the start that Sultan has given Jasmine three days to find a suitor. And that's how long this movie takes place is like three days or so, maybe two and a half. But that's a great ticking clock to set up for how long we have till something happens, something bad, presumably. It helps to set up why the movie has such a breakneck pace, but it never feels like it's going too fast. You feel like you're getting 
everything that you need out of every scene. The animation is spectacular. I mean, for being 90s animated, this thing looks mm, amazing. It could have come out today, honestly. It looks awesome. Especially, again, the genie. He is the standout animated character from this movie. They do so many great visual gags with him. This movie has a lot of, like, very subtle pokes at humor, but also, like, in-your-face animated humor, like with Genie. But also, there's little moments throughout it that you probably won't catch when you're younger, but when you're older, you'll catch that joke. Really, I don't have any complaints with Aladdin. I, I think it's a great movie all around. I think it's one of Disney's best animated movies. Between all the cast members are great. The villain is fantastic. I love his plot. I love that he wins, like, a third of, like three-fourths of the way through and then ends up losing. It's a genius way that Aladdin gets him to lose. Jafar is seduced by the one thing that he wanted was ultimate power, but he doesn't realize that ultimate power isn't all it's cracked up to be. That's perfect. That's great storytelling. Albeit simplistic, but it works. I can sum up th this movie in one word. Satisfying. You feel like you've gone through a satisfying narrative with a set beginning, middle, and end with characters you enjoy, great slapstick comedy, funny line d deliveries, spectacular animation, and a really nice heartwarming story about a boy, his genie, and his love interest, and his monkey, <laughs> and his magic carpet, and his tiger. Well, it's her tiger, but... You just feel satisfied all around after you finish watching it. And that's why I totally recommend you watch Aladdin if you haven't already. If you have, watch it again. It's really worth your time. I had a great time watching it for this review. And I have no doubt that I'll be going back to it in a couple of weeks. I had that much fun with it. You guys notice this movie's aspect ratio is a little bit weird. It's not quite 16 by 9. There are little skinny black bars on the sides. It doesn't quite fill up your entire widescreen television. I don't know what's up with that. Number four, where should you pick this product up? Same matches as number one. And number five, what price should you pay? Well, the 4K has been off store shelves for a while now. And honestly, I'm not really sure if you need the 4K. Because, I mean, it looks good. But does is it really that big of an upgrade over the Blu-ray? I got the 4K personally because I didn't have the Blu-ray. And I thought, well, if I'm going to upgrade, let's go all the way with it. Did I really need the 4K? Not particularly. It looks good, but it's not that much of an improvement over the Blu-ray. So if you're a big film completionist type person, and you just have to own everything that's Aladdin, the 4K, I'd say around 15 to 20 for that. It's still worth about its market price today. Blu-ray, the Blu-ray of this, of course, looks spectacular, because most... Disney Blu-ray transfers look great. They actually put time and effort into them, or they did before they moved all their focus to streaming, which I'm still mad about. Blu-ray is actually more common than you would think. A lot of people picked that up and are now trying to sell it because the 4K is out there and they think it looks better. I'd say about 10 to 15 for that. DVD, those are a dime a dozen, especially the 2004 version. I see that thing everywhere at pawn shops and half-price books. That thing's not worth much, probably about five bucks. It is a cool version, though. So if you want some bonus content, definitely pick up that 2004 release. The VHS from 1993, yeah, that's like two bucks. That thing's not worth anything. So that, ladies and gents, wraps up the home media review on Aladdin. Just a really fun movie that I really, really had a good time watching. I left out humming a whole new world, and you've never had a friend like me. So what's next week, my dear friends? We're going to continue on the... Disney animated trend and talk about the magnum opus of Disney animated movies. Most people think that this is the best work that Disney has ever done. It's the best 2D animated film. It's their best animated film, period. There are so many people that love this movie to death. Do I agree? Well, when we talk about Lion King next week, you'll find out if I agree or not. That wraps up things here for me. Thank you all so very much for watching, and as always, good night, everybody.